Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. This will be a fairly quick flight, I imagine. In this particular video, I'm just going to do a transfer from Phobos to Deimos. So when I went from Earth to Mars and landed on Phobos, I did a quick save at the point where I touched down. Let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And this was the point where I touched down. I found, uh, got fairly lucky that it was a relatively you know, flat area of Phobos that I just happened to, that I just happened to be approaching, and I landed there. But uh, I don't like <clears throat> not having a base of some kind or a landing platform. So what I did was I found a little flat-ish area on Deimos, and I just hacked together a quick base using just the default textures and stuff that come with the orbiter so I didn't make any models or anything like that I just made a copy of one of the other bases that's already used in the game and I put it <clears throat> onto Deimos and then just did a little bit of editing so I'm just going to try to transfer from Phobos to Deimos mainly so I can try out that base and just give myself more experience and everything so let's go ahead and start so effectively going from Phobos to Deimos, I tend to think of it as just like a like transferring from one uh, from one space station to another. Uh, just really big space stations that have that are large enough to have just a little bit of gravity, but effectively we're just kind of doing a space station to space station transfer. So I'm just going to use Transex for that. So while I'm still parked here. Um, in a comfortable position. I'm just going to uh, find out when would be a good time to leave Phobos and, and start uh, transferring over. So I'll bring up Transex on both sides. We will uh, go forward on this side just to view the eventual encounter. So let's go through the variables here. And so essentially we just need to raise one side of our orbit. So we'll start with that. Uh, because we're in orbit around Mars, and let's see here. I think I went too aggressive on that. Yeah, because we're you know we're on Phobos, and Phobos is in orbit around Mars, and in, in Deimos is in orbit. Let me actually just reset this. And Deimos is also in orbit around Mars. So I just want to. Um, oh wait, hang, I forgot to. Let me turn. Let me turn this off really quick. I was wondering why I wasn't getting the outer ring. It's because I didn't set up my target yet. So let me just quickly turn off maneuver mode, go over to setup, go through the variables until I get to, there we are, um, planets, moons, and instead of Phobos, I want to select uh, Deimos. There we go. Now, now it makes sense. So again, this is Mars, and this is the orbit of Phobos around Mars, <clears throat> and that's currently where Phobos is at. And this is the orbit of Deimos, and this is currently where Deimos is at. So yeah, we just want to raise one side of our orbit so that we can get out to the orbit of Deimos. And I don't think there's a huge plane change here. Let me check. Let's uh, reference Mars. So projection ship, distance PA, APA, frame equatorial. So then if I target... Phobos. So Phobos is in a 1.14 degree inclination. And if, I'm, if I did that right, let me check. Yeah, I think I got that right. And then we'll target Deimos. Deimos is at 2.24. So they're really close to equatorial around Mars. There's not going to be a large plane change here. So it's, uh, it's minimal enough that I'm not even going to worry about it. I'll just make it part of my my ejection burn basically so back to where I was uh, maneuver mode on and go over to prograde and we're just going to raise one side of our orbit out to the orbit height of Deimos getting about there so something like that and now I just want to find out when I can do this again I am here on Phobos so I'll have to leave Phobos but I, this will help me dial in um, to get a to get a good approximation before I worry about you know when it is I'm going to leave the uh, the safety of the rock that I'm on. So the plan, you know, we could probably make that work. Um, you know, adding in some more 
pro grade. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to skip it though, but let's just kind of take a look. So if I add in some more pro grade to get up to that altitude, and then maybe a bit more. I'm not trying to be, I'm not worried so much about ultra fuel efficiency here, but since the, we do have a little bit of a plane change, if I can arrive closer to the white line, it'll be a bit better. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of see how far out into the future I would need to go to be able to arrive when, you know, when I have a natural passage that'll put me near that white line. And maybe coming around here, maybe. Yeah, maybe here. Let's see if that works. So let's go to prograde. I should have went the other way. And it looks like maybe if I take out, yeah, if I take out some prograde. And that looks like it's pretty much going to get us all the way there. So, so it looks like 197. It looks like around 97 is the lowest. So let me go with something like that and then now check my date again. Yeah, I think we can make that work. So let's, uh, yeah, let's just play with our variable and our prograde and date. See what we can make happen here. So now we're down to 60, 30. That, that'll do it. And then with my date again. So maybe overshoot it a little bit in that direction. Then prograde. Yeah, overshoot a little bit in that direction, and you get the idea. We're there, so so we're definitely going to fly that plan. Let's just see when is this six one. Well, let me just look over to uh, view target. So it's forty nine thousand, well fifty thousand seconds from now, basically. So while we're still here, anchored, it landed on the rock. Let's just go ahead and warp time forward until we're like, you know, maybe five thousand seconds out, maybe ten, something like that. And then we'll hover up off of Phobos, put a little bit of separation between us, which will mess up our plan, of course, but this plan isn't going to hold because there's so much uh, fluctuating here anyway, but, it, but it'll be close. It'll be close enough that we don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> now, I do have the radiator open. And, of course, I don't have external cooling. There's no base here. I'm just parked on the side of a rock, even though Orbiter would let me get away with that, but I'm not going to do it. And we have plenty of locks, so we're good. So let's warp time forward. And we're at a thousand. Let's go a little faster than that. A little faster. And let's get down to say five thousand seconds. Maybe six. Eh, something like that. Alright, so we have a while to go until we're gonna do the maneuver, so now is a good time, I would say to uh, just hover up off of Phobos, get away from this rock so that when we do the maneuver, we don't, you know, try to run through it. So let's hover up. Wheels up. Just putting in some hover, or not hover, but upwards translation. We got a pretty wicked jolt there from the oddities of the uh, the landing system so when we hovered up the the system just banked hard so I'm just fixing some of that now go ahead and turn on the APU bring in the landing gear gear up and locked. all right turn the APU back off and now translation I'm just gonna translate up I've already surpassed the escape velocity of Phobos so I don't have to worry about Phobos pulling me back down or anything like that. Let's take a look. Actually, I think everything is dark where we're at at the moment, so we won't be able to see anything, but... Yeah, really need ambient light. <laughs> so we're not going to worry about that. But what we will do now is come around to maneuver, do an update, and we'll see a, probably a massive change here when we do update. Yeah, no surprise there. It wasn't as big, though, as, I, as it might have been. And we'll bring Transex up on this side so we can view the encounter. And we'll start uh, we'll start dialing that back down a little bit. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and just bump our variables a little bit to see what we need to do. Looks like a little bit more prograde has this more or less back there. 
and maybe a little bit on the date. And maybe a little more prograde. Oops, wrong direction. More or less has this there. I think we might have to incorporate. I'm um, pretty sure we're going to have to put in a bit of plane change with this maneuver, but probably a super minor amount. So starting with super, yeah, that's bringing us down. So a little bit, a little bit of plane change in the maneuver. And update. Taking out some of that prograde now. So there we are. That's our encounter. And again, uh, it's gonna. This is this isn't gonna hold very well at all. We'll have to really f fine tune it as we uh, as we get away from Phobos and and get closer to Demos. So let's view over to the target. Let's go ahead and uh, warp time forward. Get closer to the time to do our burn. It's a little ways out yet. So we're floating away from Phobos here. Actually, it looks like, I was going to say, maybe Phobos is actually starting to pull us back down. Oh, it is. How about that? Rotation. Surprising. Translation. Rotation. So I think Phobos is pulling us in a little bit. So what we'll do... In addition to just upward translation, translation, I'm gonna thrust away from it a little bit in this direction. It doesn't take much. There's barely any gravitational influence there, so that should take care of that. Now, of course, that will have you know interfered with my plan, but that's okay. Let's. Wow, are we really still coming down? Yeah, we are. How about that? Where am I at? I hate that I can't see anything. Rotation. Translation. Let's continue translating up and away. Maybe just a touch of main engine just to push us well away from Phobos. Put it in the rear view mirror so I don't have to think about it. Alright. Now that's going to have completely wrecked this plan. So, updates, and yeah, now we're way, way out. So let's uh, find out what we need to do to dial that back down. So taking out some prograde makes sense because I put in some main engine. So I can put some distance away from Phobos. So that's mainly what it was, and probably a little bit of time as well. somewhere in that range and plane change yeah taking out some of that plane change and let's see prograde and it looks like yeah we're we're back where we want to be again you know within a few kilometers of of demos and it uh, doesn't matter at this point to try to dial it down super close because of course you know, we're, we're not going to, it's, it's not going to hold well enough anyway, so we'll take that plan. And let's warp time forward. Okay, getting away from Pho, uh, yeah, Phobos. Yeah, it looks like this time we're getting away and staying away. So let me warp time forward a little bit faster. Okay, we're getting pretty close now where we want to get our vessel in position and whatnot. So let's, uh, let's bring up burn time on this side. And before we commit to that burn, because every few seconds everything changes, that's not the one I wanted. And let's update again. You can see you know, it increased drastically. Probably not even worth trying to fix this at this point, but I will just quickly because we have time. And uh, yeah. We'll go with that. It's good enough. All right. 
let's go through our variables here on target so that we can get ready to have the vessel line up. And there that one is. We're pretty close to that position, so we don't need a lot of time. All right, getting up near time to do the burn. Rotation. Go ahead and help out the auto center a little bit. And the... Pretty close, just a little bit this way. All right, there we go. Let's warp time forward. Let me get the maneuver. Go ahead and have burn time calculator carry out the burn. So about a minute out. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the autopilot. So we'll take care of this burn and we'll do a little bit of post burn cleanup. And then uh, we'll go ahead and end this part and move on to the next video. I don't suspect this will be very many parts because we're we're not going very far at all. Maybe two parts, uh, or two parts, maybe three. Here comes the burn. We'll go ahead and warp time four to get through that burn quickly. And we're getting away from Phobos. All right, turn that off. Go to maneuver. Turn off the maneuver. And then we have to add in a bit more main engine to bring down that closest approach. Oops, I... Translation. That was sloppy. Rotation. Translation. All right, so 32. And now if I bump up, down, translation, in, out... Alright, we're going to go with that for now. And then when we come back, we'll warp time forward a little bit and then make various corrections along the way. Alright, so let me go ahead and hit uh, pause here on this part. Switch camera views. So yeah, this uh, this is a pretty simple little flight, but I think it's pretty fun. And I think there's, you know, certainly things to be learned from doing it, especially like for someone that's new to Orbiter starting off on the moons of Mars and just going from one moon to the other. I think you can learn quite a bit of valuable information about setting up rendezvous and stuff with things other than space stations. But the the uh, the rocks, the asteroids essentially that are Mars's moons are um, small enough that you don't have like a really complex flight plan and they're close enough together that it doesn't take a really long time. So I think it's a I think it's a good mission and I always liked messing around on the moons of Mars, especially when you have like good bases there that you can target. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and end this part and I will see you in the next video.